Hi, in this tutorial we're going to cover lights and visual effects. It's a fairly easy tutorial, we'll head over to MovieZoo and get started. So here we are in MovieZoo, we've got an empty set and what I'd first of all like to do is just create a couple of objects from, let's just say, okay, let's get some trees in here. And maybe something in front of them, like a table. Okay. Now these trees are swaying, I'm just going to switch that sway off on the both of them. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is lighting in MovieZoo. You've got two types of lighting. You've got lighting which controls the ambience of the scene, which is the kind of overall lighting, which comes from an, uh, an imaginary invisible light way up in the sky that you can't really see, but you do have control of. And the second type of lighting that you have are lights that you can position and place yourself. Ambient lighting is the first thing that we'll look at. To access the ambient lighting controls or the environment controls, we go to Create, Edit Environment. And what this does is it throws up a box with all the sort of settings that you need. Now let's just go through the box and see what we've got here. Ambient brightness. This controls the overall brightness of the scene. You can make it really black or you can make it blown out and very bright. You can also change the ambient colour, so if you want a nice sort of blue feel, you can put a colour in there. And again, change it from dark to very bright blue. Let's return that to white. We've got control over the sky and the ground, and you can load textures onto either of these things. Think of the sky as a kind of upturned bowl, which goes right over your head. On the sky, let's pick a texture. You can see there's a category called skies. Something like that, and you can flick through these until you find the one that you're looking for. Once you've got a texture on the sky, you can then control the illumination of it. Now, I'll turn the illumination of the sky up to full, and I'll turn the brightness of the world down. You can see that by putting the illumination of the sky up, it kind of overrides the lighting, the ambient lighting settings. I'll leave that down, and we'll turn the brightness back up. The same is true of the ground. Into the ground slot, you can put a colour if you wish, or also look in textures, ground, and use one of the ones that comes shipped with MovieZoo. Alternatively, you can import your own texture as well. The ground also has an illumination control, which means if you crank that right up and adjust the brightness of the scene, you can see that the ground is not affected by the ambience at all. Let's reset that back to something sensible and turn up the brightness. Okay. The next category we get to is shadows. Now, I'm assured by Dave, our lighting programmer on MovieZoo, that the shadowing is an extremely complicated and technical affair. And he's reduced it into some fairly simple controls. You've got three different modes that you can choose from. You can choose simple shadowing, realistic shadowing, or custom shadowing. With each of those choices, the sliders that appear underneath uh, change. For the most part, you want simple control. And all that this does is it controls the darkness of the shadow which seems to be coming from the sky. So we can make the shadows really black or really quite subtle. Let's go to realistic. Now you've got two controls. Now what you can do, just as before, you can adjust the intensity to be faint or very black. This time though you can also change the sharpness so we can get we can get a harsh line around the shadows as you can see cutting across these trees right here or we can soften it right down to almost nothing. The third choice is custom and again another slider appears. Two of them we've already spoke about the sharpness and the intensity. The third one needs a little bit of explanation. And before I explain it, I'm going to throw in another light, a simple point light that I'll put right here. Now what I want you to notice about this is as soon as this light goes in the scene, you can see that the shadows are firing off to the left hand side. Now what MovieZoo does whenever you create a light in the scene, it wants to keep your scene running as quickly as possible, so we have a kind of cheap lighting code that goes on. And it looks at all the lights in your scene, in this case we only have two, we've got the one that we can see, plus the one that's coming from the sky, the environment light. And it kind of averages them together, 
and decides what is the best direction to throw the shadows. So that's what you can see happening here. The shadows are going from left to right. However, if we right click on the light's properties, we can see that we get this shadow merging option, contribute to ambient shadow, and that controls the behaviour that I've just described. With this selected, that means that this light combines with the sky light and we have one shadow direction. However, we can tell this light to cast its own shadows independent of the skylight. Now hopefully what you can see here, and I think just to make this clearer, we'll just put a white texture back on the ground and turn its illumination right down. Okay. Hopefully what you can see here is that this light is now casting its own shadow. And if I set the ambient brightness to such a level, you can see that each object now has its, now has two shadows. Look at this table. Underneath it, we can see that it's got a circle, and that's coming from the sky, but it also has this shadow going off to the left-hand side, and that's coming from this light that we've just added. When you have this arrangement of lights casting individual shadows, that's when this custom mode comes into play. I can now adjust the intensity of the shadow cast by the little bulb and also the shadow cast by the sky and I've got control over the both of them but for the most part you'll probably be better just sticking to a simple setting where we've got one light and one shadow direct. As with anything else in MovieZoo you can save the current lighting rig to a favourite environment Okay, so let's talk about the different types of lights that you've got. This one that's in the scene just now is a point light. To add other lights, let's go to Create, Lights. These are all the different types of lights that we've got. The first thing to, to realise in movies when we're talking about lights is we've got lights that can shine light, as normal lights do. We've also got lights that can shine darkness. In other words, if you switch them on, it makes the scene dark. We've got this dark light, this dark spotlight, and this dark directional light. But before we get to them, let's talk about the three different types of normal lights. We'll delete that one right now. So the light we've already seen. Spotlight's quite a cool thing. Let's create one of these. I'm just going to adjust the environment settings so that these work a little bit better. You can see that the spotlight shines just like you'd expect a spotlight to do. And if you right click on it, you can see that the spotlight's got a whole bunch of settings. Other than colour and brightness, we can change the distance that it shines, the angle of the cone that emanates from the spotlight, and also how soft the edge of the spotlight is. We can also load an image uh, into the spotlight. Let's pick a better one than that. The movies your logo, for example. And by loading textures into spotlights, say the texture of um, of trees or something like that, you can make it seem like the sun is shining through the trees above you. We can change the scale of things as well. So you can play with all these settings and every light has a flickering option where you can switch it on to make it appear broken. You can save the spotlight as a favourite too. Let's delete the spotlight and I'll show you the next one. The next one is a directional light. The directional light is a little bit like the spotlight except that it fires its rays in one parallel direction. Now for you to see this, I'll take the texture off the sky dome and indeed put the colour white on it. So hopefully you can see that this directional light is affecting, it's almost like it's shining all its light in one direction. This is kind of the way that sunlight behaves and it's a good light to use if you want to recreate the effect of sunlight in your scene. And just like any other light, the directional light has settings that you can change. The brightness of it, the colour of it, and also whether it's flickering or not. You can change the flicker speed. I don't know why you'd want to create a broken sun right enough, but there we go. Let's delete that. Go back into our scene. I also mentioned these dark lights too. Let's create a dark light. They're kind of weird. They pull shadows towards themselves. It's the opposite of having a bright light. And wherever a dark light shines, it'll make that area darker. It's the sort of light that cinematographers wish that they did have. Of course, the brighter you make a dark light, the darker it gets. 
you can also adjust its distance to and its colour does weird things. If you make it red, it'll always pick the opposite of itself in the colour wheel. They're kind of weird things, uh, but you can throw them around just see and get some, some pretty cool settings. And of course the other two lights have their dark equivalent also. So that's light stunt. Let's delete that. And let's talk about effects. Let's go to create effects. Now when you create effects, you've got this... Uh, long list of things and these are all particle effects in movies and you can create weather in here we've got dust storm rain snow uh, let's load up one of the fires for example this may take a minute to spawn the first time okay there's our fire in place we can move it around just like any other object effects can be rotated and customized just like everything else in movies and if we right click this one you can see the options that are present we can change the intensity of it so it can burn really brightly. Let's turn the ambience of the scene down so that we can see the fire. Let's play around with the intensity of the fire. Switch it off or make it burn really bright. We can change the texture of things. So if you've got a, a nice texture you'd like to make it the flames and you can load that up here too. You can taint it with a colour. Let's make it green. And likewise with the smoke, let's make the smoke pink. And all these effects, which I'd encourage you just to just to play around with, have settings that you can uh, adjust that are quite cool. Let's look at some other options in the fire. Um, we've got physics down here. Now, effects can only be spun round in turntable mode with the right-hand mouse button. But if you put on full rotation, that means that they can be tumbled end over end and made to shoot their particles in all sorts of weird directions. you can get some quite cool effects with this and I'm going to do one right now just to show you what's possible with effects let's delete everything in the scene for this I want to create an object uh, let's make the rocket and for the rocket I need to switch off floats I need to switch on floats in the air and keep upright because I want to lift it up and tip it over on itself just like this we'll pull it back get myself into a position that we can see it I want to take this camera that we've got and put it around the back of the rocket. This is what I'm looking at, this window right here, just to get the camera in the right position. I'll just pull the camera back a little. Okay, let's create uh, an effect. Rain. Put the rain away out there. Hide that camera window for now. And in the rain I want to switch on full rotation make it white and bump its intensity up let me just get to a position that I know what I'm doing here and then we can just tip the rain over in itself I think you can probably see where this is going so the rain goes there like that also what I want to do is create a large fire tell a lie small fire I want to put that, this is going to be the jet engine again for the fire. I want to up the intensity, switch on full rotation and tip this back in itself. So we've got a kind of jet exhaust going on there. Okay, we're not that convinced yet. Let's bring up the camera window again. Final thing is to go to edit environment and make the sky black and the ground black. And there you've got one hyperspace space scene. And this is just one little trick you can do by orientating effects and using clever, clever lighting controls.